Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Shad... Nope. Choice of Rebels, not Shadow War. Choice of Rebels Uprising. Uh, it's another week, and this is... Uh, we're hurting, man. We're hurting bad, and I don't know what else to do. I, hope, I feel like I'm making every wrong decision possible. Um, but we'll see. So, let's get started. Got 66 healthy adult bandits left to commit this week. Your stores of 51 bushels are enough for the bands of pointing rations, opening up other possibles, possibilities for deploying your band. Tira informs you that the, that the 56 followers in his care would need at least um, 15 or 16 mules if they're going to move quickly in a crisis. He says it was a note of despair in his voice. Knowing as well that you do that, you don't. Have, okay, so... Let's see. Let's let's make a change to his standing order. Let's change the rations. We have a lot of rations. Okay, I like this. This this might work for now. A healthy diet for all sick outlaws and a subsistence diet for all healthy ones. Hi, Captain Yebin nods. The sick should recover on that, and the healthy well, they'll get by until we can bring him better. He concentrates in silence for a few moments. That means we'll need a total of 47 bushels of barley to feed everyone. We'll bring it in, you promise. Which we already have. Cool. More mules is bad. We're waiting for people to come back to see if we can steal any. Um... Let's see... Raid the nearest temples and monasteries of Thanos. I don't... I'm scared of that. Work with local merchants. Sabotage the heroes nearby towns. Set more, more deadly or crippling traps in new parts of the wilderness. Send missions out to spread the war. Hmm. How many do we... We got 66. We've got hunt, hunt for game. Let's send 20 to hunt for game. Let's send 20 for, to hunt for game. Over the course of the week, 20 followers try a bit of while you're moving through. On average, each managed to bring back around 5 rabbits and other small game animals. Nice. Should save us 5 bushels. Cool. Hmm. 20 bandits. I'm afraid of what's going to happen if we raid. Let's try it, though. Let's try a raid. Your outlaws are still, for the most part, terrified by the idea of raiding a temple. Besides yourself, Breeden is the one leader in the band who might sustain a raiding party's morale against the furious priests. Do you want to bring... Sure. Let's bring her along. You plan the first robbery carefully, choosing a nearby town which you know to be reasonably prosperous with a sizable... Now is Zalnos in its market square. On the day of the raid, you send five outlaws on a feint just to the east, setting a fire to the nobles' estate orchards. Naturally, the town's alisters are called out to hunt down the bandits. An hour after their departure, you lead 15 more women and men down toward the town, bows and blades hidden under ragged pilgrim cloaks. You arrive three at a time in a winter rainstorm by different roads, drawing only cursory attention from the helots and tradesmen along the way. A familiar hymn o echoes from the wet basalt block temple as you cross the town square. Thanos, O Thanos, almighty, all-ruling, that knows itself only unchanging and true, by Zao, a sealed, yet unmoved and unshaken, extol that which is with that which is with the praise it is due. You feel an unexpected twinge of awe and have to swallow back the sudden moisture that fills your mouth. Suddenly, or no, then, through the afternoon shadows at the far side of the temple, you glimpse the hunched silhouette of the town's harrower. The moment of awe evaporates and you stride through the now gate, giving a quick nod to your men, watering their mules on either side. There are five other worshippers in the dripping now courtyard, including a slender young nobleman in his dour-looking chaperone. As your raiders drift in, some of them humming along nervously with the choir, the yard becomes noticeably crowded. The ecclesiast and one of her acolytes share a concerned glance. Before they can say anything, you give a piercing whistle, cast off your cloak, and bring your staff up to a warrior's stance. At the signal, two yammering mules burst through the temple arch arch goaded by your men. The rest of your party adds to the fearsome clamor by howling and clashing their weapons. The priests... And, the, and most of the pilgrims scramble away, squealing as two of your bandits slam at the bar, 
slam in the bar, bar the gates. The young noble's hand flies to his hip, but clenches on ear. He must have left his sword at the now gate. After only an instant of shot, the ecclesiast throws out her arms and cries, Anathema! Damnation on any blasphemer who bears the weapon to the servants of Thanos. Her curse has the powerful cadences of the trained rudder. And despite their increased confidence, you can see your outlaws blanch and waver. You've never been in the presence of someone who could so plausibly claim to be mortal, a mortal mouthpiece of the angels. I glance at Breeden, hoping her way with words is equal to the Ecclesiastes. Nice. With scarcely a heartbeat's pause, Breeden cries, You're no servant of the merciful angels, woman. We are. And I say... And I say anathema on all those who distort the rules, the truths of Zanos, and call it canon. Damnation to those who use the name of angels to justify murder. The priest stammers a response, but soon falters in the face of Breeden's righteous, eloquent conviction. It takes your followers a couple of minutes to strip the courtyard of its silver statuary, the altar of its golden bowls and daggers, and the clerics of their jeweled collars and white woolen cloaks. Once the plunder is last year, mules, you unbar the gates. The scandalized crowd that has formed outside instantly scatters when your archer fire knocks whistling arrows over their heads. Thanks to Breeden and to the wealthy, you bring back the camp to camp with no casualties. You get no more reluctance from your followers about future raids on temples and monasteries. You clearly made the priests of Thanos your enemies, but you and your, your inspired little band of outlaws can live with that. Yes! Awesome. Glad that paid off. Oh man, so beautiful. I'd love to acquire more mules. Let's see. Mules. Let's change how I'm using mules. Turret and perfectly have 56 followers in this care with at least 15 or 16 mules. So then move quickly. At the moment of the band's 13 mules, two are reserved for the sick. You change that to a total of... Let's do six. Thank angels. That's much needed help. Turret manages a fleeting smile. Cool. Um, we have 26 healthy adult bandits. Hmm. I want more mules, but I don't think we can. We need to wait till we can find some we can steal. Hmm. Let's see if we can't do this again. If you want to meet with the merchant island, you'll need to try again on weaker and you're not already committed elsewhere. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Gosh, I don't know what to do. Okay, we'll try to recruit new followers. We'll do hell. Let's do hell. Or we never done this by themselves. Um. Let's send 15 and then we'll just call it a week. Let's send Ellery. Your 15 outlaws travel secretly by night to promote your cause. These young men prove a receptive and need a passionately engaged audience. Your mission returns triumph at bringing a few recruits as testimony to your many new supporters back in the room. Cool. Okay. That's all we can do this week. You set your 11 remaining followers are practicing with their captured weapons and still unfamiliar bows. By the end of the week, they feel slightly better prepared for battle for the battle to come. As the end of the week draws near, you and Breeden account for the 25 scouts on multi-week missions. 10 are looking for a vulnerable tithe barn. 10 and 15 are looking for opportunities to steal mules from the hedge money. At the end of the week, your decision to forego a barley run looks prudent. You've brought in enough food from other sources to feed the band at the agreed rations. Overall, three more bandits have fallen too ill to leave the camp. Some of the sick have begun to recover thanks to the increased supply of food and blankets. Two left the sick tents this week. Another three children have fallen ill, but with ample rations for the sick, one child has recovered enough to leave Terrett's care. In the coming week, ten of your healthy bandits will be needed in camp to care for the sick and dying. When all is said and done, you now have 304 followers. Your three new recruits partly offset by the one you've lost since last week. One of whom of whom 171 are too young and 32 others currently too sick to go on raids. Okay, so the rations choice was good. I didn't know that I could do that, so now that's 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 good. They're talking about us, Captain. Everywhere I went, there were whispers about Callan Oakfell and the Windward Band. 
Seals wipes the rain from his brow. He's just back from a scouting trip that ranged fairly close to Rim Square. Saw more than twice the Alistairs you'd expect, too, from the garrisons around Rim Rimmersford, for all accounts. Half the troops from the Rimheart and he he Heath have been pushed out, out and north. For a wistful moment, you dream of the capital of the Rim left vulnerable, and your rebels numerous, healthy, and equipped enough to take it. Are they beginning in <clears throat> bringing in more from the ridings to replace them? Breeden asked intently. Seals looks a bit apologetic. I get the feeling that they're expecting to catch you within the month and have everything returned to normal. They'll never see normal again, you vow. Did everyone agree to sell us forged arms? Anyone. Elaine said that she'd be a lunatic to try running arms to a rebellion under the Alistair's noses, and that anyone expecting any other answer from her would be twice the lunatic. Sorry, Captain. Seals clears his throat. Cassalon also said it would be mad, but if, but that if he did find her discreet enough supplier, they'd both expect to be paid bloody well. You feel your mood bright, brighten slightly. Well, we can hope that means he's looking for now. So let's see about ordering some grain from him to keep his feelings friendly. At the start of week 5, when you send out on the barley run, the band has around 8 bushels of grain in stock. You'll need to get that up to 48 bushels before the end of the week. Everyone's eat the ration juice set. Your total wealth is 0 silver drachms and loot worth 2,652 more. That's more than enough for your needs, but that means drachms you could buy up to 157. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's so, so beautiful. Oh, man. Um, about to 157 bushels. How many bushels do you actually want to buy from the f fences? We need more mules. Crap. We have eight. We need 48. Let's buy 60. Carrying back 60 bushels require all of your seven free pack animals and 42 outlaws. You worry that a group so large would have near certainty of being spotted. Um... The VOD suggests you can carry up to 42 bushels safely or up to 57 if you reallocated four of the mules from the sick tents to the convoy. Every mule or person you add to that captain will boost the risk of being caught, and the angels know we can't afford to lose a great one. Okay, we'll reallocate some mules from the sick tents. We'll give them four. That's fine. Uh, with four mules now joining the grain run, your order of 57 bushels will require all of your 11 free pack animals and 11 outlaws. Are you happy committing that many followers to the grain run? It will leave you with only 55 healthy adults left for all of your other raids this week. Yes. The convoy of 11 mules and 11 outlaws vanishes in the trees. You'll hope you'll see them again by Pyre Day. The scouts you sent to look for mules have returned at last with two good prospects. A remote monastery of Thanos in the northern rim and an Alistair mine garrison which keeps its own supply of mules. From the sounds of it, you could get six mules easily from the Ecclesiast or ten from the Alistairs if the battle goes well. The scouts looking for a vulnerable tithe barn have found one with only a small deployment of Alistair guards. You've got 80 healthy adult bandits to commit this week. Your stores of 8 bushels plus the 57 you've ordered are enough for the band's appointed rations, opening up other possibilities for deploying your band. Terra informed you that the 59 followers in his care would need at least 16 or 17 mules if they're to move quickly in a crisis. He says it with a note of despair in his voice, knowing that you do not have that many. <sighs> we want more mules. We need them. Fifteen to thirty-five bandits. Hmm. I thought that we could. We already could. Let's steal them. Might have some, we might have some casualties, but we need. I assume that greater risk equals greater reward. So hopefully that means more mules for this. Um. Ah, there we go. Your scouts identified a remote monastery of Donos and Alistair mine garrison that you could raid for mules. We need those mules. Let's raid the Alistairs. I'll personally lead the raid. Take their mules. You'll need to defeat the Alistair decisively. You want to send one of the band's better commanders? I want to lead it personally. 
You consider inviting Ellery Skinner to join the raid while she hasn't been tested against the hegemony people who have been in a scrum with Ellery speak of her as a brilliant tactician and dogged fighter and she's already well liked by the other outlaws. Sure, I'll bring her. Uh, your target is three days hard march away where the Windward Hill is just out in a sharp spur between the outer and northern rim for the... From the last thickly forested hilltop, you have a good view of the Alistair's small base, built around a mine camp and copper smelting kin. You talk over the plan of battle with the rest of the party. Hesitantly at first, but with growing excitement, Ellery suggests various ways you could use the terrain to your advantage. See what's left of that dam, Captain, where they built up the water to hush away the spoil from the ore fires? That hushing gullies got wider since the rain started, and I'll wager their watch po posts don't properly overlook it. Her ideas seem ingenu ingenious to me. Let's, let's sure, M might as well. <sighs> Just after sunset, you're crouched in the lee of a weathered boulder, doing your best to ignore a dozen stinging cuts from the dense brush of the valley floor. The evening is cloudy but dry, with a glorious orange-red sky behind the western mountains, no wind or rainfall muffles the cry from the nearby mine camp. Spies, rebel spies, out and after them. A minute later, two of your outlaws sprint down the mine track in front of you, seemingly frantic to reach the distant cover of the trees. Hard on their heels come a dozen or so mace-wielding Alistairs, unarmored, plainly not expecting a daylight ambush in the relatively open terrain near their watchtowers. They'd not imagine twenty-odd raiders sneaking up on the new hushing gully in the boulder field overlooking the track. Your roar of, Attack! Uh, leaves half the Alistairs flailing wildly and most of the rest paralyzed. You've brought enough archers and bow-trained helots to fell a third of them before the rest of your band closes with the survivors. The fight doesn't last long and you have only one casualty. Oh, I love the sound of that. Howling and shrieking like Zao itself, your victorious ambushers charge up toward the camp. Through the entryway, you can see mine drudges fleeing from the, and the remaining Alistair scrambling to shut the gate. But glancing up to the cliff above, you see that Ellery and her 13 raiders have appeared as planned and are pelting everyone in the entry area with sling stones. The gate is only half closed when you reach it. With your own most terrifying yell, you put your head down and slam your shoulder against the slowly moving timbers. The gate judders to a halt as 10 other outlaws do the same. As defenders spill into the into, op into the opening and a mace splits the skull of the outlaw at your shoulder. But before you can Bring up, bring up your own staff to protect yourself. Another howling bandit has sprung past you and put her knife into the Alistair. Nice. The battle is bloody but brief. One Alistair flees into the mine tunnel, but your outlaws chase after her, whooping. Aye, little rat, the ferrets are coming. Minutes later, they emerge waving bloody clubs and laughing. You fight to keep the nausea and horror from showing on your face. Hmm. Some of your raiders have secured the ten bra braying mules while others continue to plunder the fallen Alistairs in their camp. You turn your attention to the thirty wide-eyed mine drudges who are pressed against the stockade as far from the fighting as possible. They are a lean, sinewy bunch, their clothes stained black from the soot of the ore fires. A few of them are holding up picks and chiseling bars as, as if ready to use them in self-defense, but one, most look terrified. Two foremen wearing warm woolen nightshirts rather than loincloths are hiding at the back of the gang. I'm Captain Callan Oakville, you call, walking toward them, leader of the Windward Band, and rebel against the Thaumatark. Hmm. Either join us, we don't have enough food to take them with us, but I share some of the plunder with them. How many are there? Thirty. I want them to spread the legend of my ruthlessness. I just tell them to stay out of our way and none of them will be hurt. We'll tell them to join us. Maybe we could use them. Most of the drudges look horrified at the suggestion. You overhear uneasy mutters from the outlaws behind you about bringing back more mouths to starve, but you persist. I know you don't face a hero where as often as we did, and you might find our life in the forest hard this winter. I'll not lie to you, but if you're if you're sick of living under the whip as as I was, this is your chance to be the one striking the blows rather than receiving them. After a few doubtful moments when no one moves, a third of the mine drudges break away from the rest and join your band in plundering the camp. The others in the foreman remain huddled in their corner until you leave. You head back to the wilderness, not just with more followers and ten more mules, but around six bushels of barley and thirty-three drachms, as well as decent quality weapons from eight of the fallen Alistairs. You could send some of your forty-three followers to scout more opportunities to steal mules from the hegemony. Hmm.
Yeah, let's go look for some more. Um, oh yeah, you could buy them. We could buy a mule, but I ain't doing that. Okay, sweet. That was successful. I like that. Um, let's. I've got thirty healthy bandits. We'll we'll do like fifteen hunt and fifteen can practice. Fifteen can hunt, uh, and they bring back four rabbits per, so that saves us three bushels. And then, oh, okay. Send that missions to spread the word of our rebellion and recruit new followers. I guess that's not all we can do. Let's scout for opportunities. Let's look for another temple, because that made us very rich. Around the dinner circle one night, you raise the possibility and are pleased that no one looks too dismayed. Your outlaws remain for the most part devout, but if you still believe that the current priesthood has the power to call down the angel of vengeance on your band, you send ten scouts back into the realm looking for temples which are close enough to be reachable, prosperous enough to be worth the risk of raid, and are not too well guarded. That's all we can do this week. Sounds good. You set your five remaining followers are practicing with their captured weapons and still unfamiliar bows. At the end of the week draws near, you and Breed encounter the 25 scouts on a multi-week mission. They are hunting for vulnerable temples and looking for mule opportunities. This also proves to be the long-feared week when the Thaumatarchy properly catches your scent. Uh-oh. Alright. So the Thaumatarchy has captured our scent. Um. And we are in trouble. I've already read the thing about the mules. Oh boy, we're in trouble, but we can't talk about it today. We will check this out uh, on our next video. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I thank you very much for watching, and I love you very much. Bye-bye.